Hi everyone and welcome to the Scrap FX Design Team YouTube channel. Today we're going to be playing with alcohol inks and making um, galaxy cards with the new space themed Scrap FX chipboard. So I'm just starting out on some um, A5 UPO paper and going in with some black, um, pitch black alcohol ink. And now I'm just splashing on some different colours in cool colours, so purples, um, teals, blues and some pinks. Um, I'm starting off with the old version of the alcohol ink, so the um, non pearlized version, and just dropping in the colours here, there, and everywhere. The colours that you can see sort of bleeding out, and the ones I'm applying right now, are the brand new alcohol inks, the alcohol pearl inks. So you need to shake these before you apply them, and they've got a pearlized um, mica base within them um, that just looks beautiful and they react slightly differently. If you noticed when I first dropped the pure alcohol inks on it sort of just sort of splodged down whereas when you drop on these um, pearlized inks they do blend out a little bit more. So once I've got my colors down and I'm happy with it I'm just going back in with some more of the pitch black. Now the reason I put the pitch black down first is just to sort of fill in the background. I played with this before and you'll see a piece that I do uh, use later on where I did the alcohol background like I just have and then put the black on at the end and it just overpowered everything so by putting it on at the beginning it just gives a little bit more control over the black to get that sort of galaxy thing happening. So now I'm going in with another um, uh, a gold mixative just to add a little splash of gold, and I've just put that back on the felt and with a little bit of blending solution on it, so you get this sort of touch of gold happening across the page, and it's a little bit hard to see because the um, the shine from the paper and the alcohol inks, but you can see that gold going in now. Um, when you're using the mixatives, it is important to use the blending solution with it. It just helps it sort of move across the page and blend into the inks a little bit more. By putting the blending solution on as well, it helps move the inks underneath just to make it all sort of come together. So these are the two pieces I was talking about before. I applied the black after the fact and it's just a little bit more condensed, the colour that's on it. So these are the new chipboard pieces from ScrapFX and all the links to these um, pieces are in my blog post which is attached to the description and the links below. So to colour these in, I'm just going in with my Posca paint pens to colour these. Um, when I'm doing the fine detail scrap FX pieces, these ones have got images or um, detail sort of squirt into them with the laser cutter. And if I painted them with a paintbrush, I'd probably lose some of that detail. So by using my brush or my Posca paint pens, it just helps control some of that detail. So as I was going, I was sort of wondering what colours to do. I started off using the red, I don't know why I chose the red, I was sort of looking for some primary colours and I ended up thinking, no, nah, I'm going to stick with the colours I've used in my background. So I, tend, I swap over to using some of the teals and purples and pinks, just so I've got something that sort of stands out from the background a little bit. So you can see me recolouring that pink. Uh, the red with the pink colour just to tie it into the background. Um, also it looks like I'm putting down white here but this is actually a silver. Um, the Posca paint pens are really metallic, the metallic ones are really metallic so they work really really well and particularly um, with the alcohol ink background with those little splashes of metallics in the background having the metallic paint pen to go with it as well works really really well. So this is the gold metallic pen and again I apologise for the shine, it was really hard to sort of show up metallics and the alcohol inks without having that shine. The alcohol ink backgrounds I have done on Yupo paper and it, the Yupo paper I've used in both of these was the Ranger Yupo paper so it comes in an A5 size. You noticed me heat setting it with a heat gun and I was really, really cautious about doing that because Yupo is a plastic paper so if you do overheat it, it will buckle and warp so please be aware and probably heating alcohol inks isn't the best thing to do in the world so make sure you're working 
or when I work in with alcoholics, I always work in a well ventilated area anyway. So just make sure that you've got some good ventilation, and particularly if you're heating it. Probably using something like an air blower or a compressed air in a little can would be a better way to dry it off. So now I'm just going in with lots of different colours of my paint pens just to add in some extra detail and you can see it sort of pop on the page <clears throat> and colouring in um, all the different sections. I really loved that little rocket. I, I loved all the different bits of it and it reminds me of, uh, if there's any Australians out here watching it, um, Round the Twist, it's a TV show for kids from the 90s. I don't know why, but it reminds me of The Lighthouse from that show. So this is the final bit. This is one of um, the frames from the new collection, which you could use beautifully around an image or a picture. But I liked sort of the curving and the rocket tail and how it worked, and it worked on the page. So I'm just combining that with this out of this world saying as well. One of the things I enjoyed about this project is going back in, and I do it on the other rocket as well, is going back in and adding some pattern onto the different rockets. So just putting in some random dots and lines just to make it stand out a little bit. I'm also using this neon yellow colour. I really liked it in the tail of the rocket on the frame. So I decided to add some of this to the star as well, the shooting star. With the Out of This World, I decided to do a multicolored and just use those three colors over and again, just to make it stand out a little bit and make it something different. Um, when I look at the final piece, I'm not sure I 100% love it with the multicolors on it, but it's just something a little bit different. Now, I really enjoyed making these cards because they are a little bit quirky, but they could be used for anything and particularly I think kids both boys and girls would love this set of cards um, particularly for a birthday or a space mad person so and tying it with the galaxy back, alcoholic background just really I think brings it together so once I've finished my three pieces now I'm going back in putting a few extra details again using that neon pen because I'm in a neon color phase at the moment I tend to use it a lot on, on most of my projects um, I decide I need to do something with the background. So I, while I really liked the galaxy background, it wasn't looking galaxy enough for me. So I decide that I need to put some stars in it and I do that by applying some acrylic ink in white. Um, and that just really made the background pop out and made it look more galaxy-like. So. I, um, by doing that, it just really helped bring it all together. With the Space Adventurer um, chipboard, I was going to add some extra colour, but I actually really liked just the pure white on it. I thought it really stood out, so I just actually left it. So to put my white uh, uh, acrylic ink on, I'm just using a fan brush and just tapping it over my finger. There's lots of different ways of getting splatters, but this is the best way I've found for getting... Um, both fine and bigger blobs is to use a fan brush. I'm also just heat setting this again just because I had some big blobs of paint on it and I wanted to make sure that it was mostly dry. Now I, in reality I should have left this overnight to let it dry but I was feeling really impatient. I wanted to get onto this and get it finished. Um, so I actually cheat somewhat and go in with a paper towel and just sponge off any extra. While I was doing that, I knew I wanted to use this new transparency from ScrapFX to add into one of my cards, and that was the card that had the frame on it. It just fitted perfectly over one of those little circles, the moon shape. So I wanted to have that in the background. But when I played around with it, I actually decided I really wanted to have that transparency on um, all of my cards, or at least two of them. So. Now I'm just gluing down my chipboard pieces and I'm just using some connect glue from Gina K Designs. Um, it's basically a PVA glue but it works really well and it's got a beautiful applicator on it and it's never clogged on me so far which is a bonus because a lot of the glues I have tend to clog up. So you can see me here putting the chipboard piece around that moon shape just to make sure it sort of fits on and it just gives a really interesting background 
adds into um, what's happening on the page. So I'm just adhering the chipboard to the transparency and then I'll adhere the transparency to the background. For this one I couldn't decide if I wanted it horizontal or vertical um, just because of the way it sort of worked. I kept, I think I actually ended up having it sort of a horizontal card but it could go either way. It's totally up to you. Um, because you're in space it doesn't matter if you're little, um, I was going to say alien, your little astronaut is floating upside down so um, yeah, personal choice you decide what you're going to do. I'm just using a craft knife to trim off my transparency. I would suggest that you have a sharp craft knife when you do this. I probably need a new blade on mine. And to be honest, I should have trimmed this off before I ch stuck down the chipboard. I was going to put it through my trimmer again, but with the chipboard there, it just got a little bit complicated. So now I'm just going to glue down the transparencies to the background after I've folded up my cards. Now I didn't have any cardstock that would fit these because they're quite large cards, they're sort of A5 cards. So I've used some 12 by 12 card and I'm just going to trim it down so it fits with a small border around it. At the moment I'm really into just having a plain white card in the back and not doing much else to it and letting the card front speak for itself. Um, you could certainly layer this up with lots of different layers and make it look really interesting. Um, but I think it's quite busy and it's got a lot going on with the alcohol ink galaxy background and the transparency and the beautiful chipboards as well. So I'm just using the same glue I did to glue down the chipboard and that's held the transparency really, really well. I wasn't 100% sure that it would. Um, sometimes glues don't like gluing onto plastic um, but this one's held really, really well. If you really struggled to glue it down, I'd suggest using glue dots. Um, they would help and you could use the, uh, put the glue dots where the chipboards are so that you don't see the glue dots through the transparency. So with my off cuts, it just worked perfectly that it would fit this last little card. It's just a little bit smaller than all the others. And it, this one sort of opens horizontally. Um, so it sort of stands up as a sort of, tent fold card I suppose instead. So these are the three cards that I made. Um, I really liked how they worked. I'm just tilting them up so you don't get the shine on them and this is a close-up of them. And you can see that beautiful background um, contrasted with the bright colours of the chipboard in the beginning. So very very simple to do. It didn't take very much time at all and it's using materials that you've got around I'm sure in your house already or things that you've used before. Um, Again, if you want to get the Scrap FX products, please check out their blog to find out where your local retailers are and how to get your hands on them. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any other cool projects that are coming up in the future. And until next time, bye for now.